I'm here today with Tom Noonan, the CEO of Julex, and Tom, you are clearly one of the past, present, and continued future leaders of the technology community, so thanks for being here today. Thank you, John. Good to be here. You know, one of the key questions that we're asking folks is to tell us about the early days of the technology community. I know you are uh, steeped in tradition here of the tech community and Georgia Tech, but tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to the tech community and uh, your background at Georgia Tech. Sure, John. I, uh, first of all, was born and raised in Atlanta, grew up over on Briarcliff Road and went to Georgia Tech. And my, I would say my first job in the technology industry was um, probably my toughest. It was um, cutting the gold connectors off old Burroughs mainframe uh, circuit boards. And we would uh, cut those with these massive industrial shears. And, you know, I'd come home at the end of, end of the day in between classes at Georgia Tech with my hands raw. And, um, but we were reclaiming the gold connectors, which ostensibly were valuable back then. And as we know now, gold is even more valuable. So we were doing a good service for someone. But the, um, you know, the time at Georgia Tech was really a formidable time for me. That's where, you know, I, you know, fundamentally made a decision, I want to pursue something in technology and a career in technology. So here I am almost 30 years later, still doing it. It's great. How did you get involved with uh, Mansion Science America, MSA, and, uh, and what role did John Imlay play in your advancement as a technology leader? Um, John, John Imlay has played such an important role in Atlanta technology and in this community and he continues um, to play an important role and I'm, I really feel fortunate to have the relationship that I have with John but ironically my whole uh, relationship with John began not at MSA but began at Georgia Tech. I was president of a group at Georgia Tech called the um, Executive Roundtable which was chartered with bringing in business executives to speak to the students, um, you know, ostensibly to help us with career thoughts. And uh, John Imlay came to Georgia Tech. He got on stage and did what John does best and brought the house down. And honestly, I think about 300 of us walked out of that auditorium that night. This is probably 1983 or 1984. And we said, we want to be like John Imlay. <laughs> So my relationship with John goes back to the time when I was a student at Georgia Tech. Um, when I graduated Georgia Tech with a mechanical engineering degree, I went to work in the computer integrated manufacturing systems world. Um, that took me to Milwaukee and Chicago and New York and Boston. And while I was in Boston, I married my Georgia Tech freshman chemistry lab partner, who is, uh, as you know, decidedly Southern and she moved back to Atlanta leaving me in Boston and leaving me to look for a job in Atlanta. Um, Enter John Imlay again with uh, MSA Advanced Manufacturing and um, John was building out a large software division associated with manufacturing materials planning and uh, the next thing I knew I was a newly minted MSA employee. Tell us about, uh, as far as the, start, the founding of ISS, Internet Security Systems, one of the most successful technology companies in Atlanta ever. Um, how did you work on starting the company, work with Chris Klaus? Just give us a little background there. Sure. Um, first, ISS was an extraordinary success for our employees, for our city, um, for me personally, for Chris. Um, just a very, very positive experience. And, you know, it all really began, ironically, with, over the internet, the very median um, that we set out to protect. Chris was a Georgia Tech student, um, Dun & Bradstreet, and uh, the, the parent company or the surviving company of MSA. Um, uh, and I, you know, the internet was a new thing. That was 1980, that was 1992. Um, time frame and Chris was out there on the internet. One of my dear friends, Kevin O'Connor, um, who's the founder of DoubleClick, um, ran into Chris Klaus at a uh, hacker 
uh, meeting that he went to here in Atlanta in 1994 and he said you really ought to meet this guy they're building tools at Georgia Tech and um, you know he's a really interesting guy so on one of my trips to Atlanta um, I met with Chris I really liked him we hit it off um, we were polar opposites but remain the best of friends today um, he was the technology genius and the security genius and I, I just you know, helped uh, bring about the company around that technology. So Chris and I got together. We were effectively employee one and two. Um, we moved into the back of a warehouse in Norcross. Chris had been operating ISS out of his dorm room and out of his grandmother's apartment. And after, I guess, 10 years of my career of, you know, wearing three-piece suits and ties I started showing up to work, you know, in flip-flops and shorts. It was quite an extraordinary um, transition for me, but, um, you know, one thing led to another, and we bootstrapped ISS at first. Um, John Imlay came in after we maxed out our credit cards. I think the, the story is well known here in this town about my 37 uh, Visa cards. Um, that we maxed out trying to get the company off the ground, but John put up the uh, seed capital and, you know, the rest is history. Fourteen years later, IBM pays a billion and a half dollars for us, um, some 4,000 employees operating in 48 offices around the world, um, publicly traded on the NASDAQ and the Tokyo Stock Exchange, and really and truly a company that when the history books are written with security, um, really brought security, intelligent security, into the mainstream um, of the internet. So I think ISS will always have a place, and Atlanta will have the place uh, as a founding technology. And you know, you can look around. There's there's over a hundred security companies that have come through Atlanta or been started in Atlanta, and it's it's an epicenter of security in the world to this day.